Hey there, it's Izzy here again. In this video, I want to start with a question for you. And the question is, have you ever used a PowerPoint slide or a keynote slide as part of a video you've created? Now, my guess is you probably have. I know I have personally several times myself, and I think pretty much anybody who's ever made videos has used slides at some point or another. The reason I bring this up is because even though we can use slides, of course, there's nothing wrong with using slides, I think there is a much, much better option, which I want to share with you in this video. Now, before we get into what I think might be a better option, let's take a look at how we add the slides, why we might do it this way. All right, so I'm going to start with Keynote. I'll Command Tab, hit Command and Tab, go over to Keynote, and I'm going to create a new slideshow. So I'll go to File, New, and I'm going to choose a template here. And here's one of the reasons why I think a lot of people like to use slideshows is because you get all these different styles to choose from. It's very nice, and everything kind of automatically looks good. I'm going to choose this basic one, basic white, and then click Create. And then let's add a new slide. I'll click on Add Slide, and let's add a title and photo alt. So this is the template. Now let's say this is a very typical type of text that we might add. So I'll just double click inside here to put my own text here instead of the placeholder text. I'll say thank you for joining us today. And then I'll double click on this one and I'll say the presentation will begin at 10.30 a.m. Okay, so pretty typical text. Also, I want to replace the placeholder image here. And so what I'll do is I'll open up a window here and a finder window. And let's just put this image of a bird. So I'll just click and drag this image in here. There we go. And I can rearrange it. So I'll just double click on this little placeholder. And now I can kind of move the photo behind the mask there, get it more centered like that, and then click done. Okay, so that looks pretty good. That's one slide ready to go. And this is one of the reasons why we use slides, right? Is because you can very easily make nice looking text. It has a good looking layout. You can very quickly put a different photo in there. You could actually even put a video clip in there if you want. Let's create one more slide really quick. I'll click on Add Slide. Let's add a three up version. So this is multiple slides in a really nice looking layout or multiple images here. And I'll drag this image into this one. And I'll drag, let's go with this image into this one and this image into this one. Okay, and then I can rearrange them once again. Double click here. I can scale this up like that. I can move it over and double click here. Move this down a little bit maybe and double click here, reposition that and then click done. Okay, so now I have a couple slides there that I want to add to a video. Now I'll start by deleting this first empty slide. I'll just select it and hit delete on the keyboard. And now let's export these two different slides as images. Now, this is not the only way to do that. There are multiple ways to do things. So for example, I could go up to File, and then I could choose Export To. And if I wanted to, I could export to a movie file. But in this case, what I'm going to do is just export to Images. I've got Images selected here. I'll choose Slides All. That's fine. And I'll use a JPEG format. That's fine too. Then I'll click Next. I'll navigate in my Finder to the Desktop and then to my Slide Images folder, and we'll just call this Prelude Slides, like that, and then I'll click Export. And it'll go through the process of creating a couple images there, and each one of the images represents each one of these slides, of course. And now let's minimize this. So, and I can also minimize this here. Let's open up Final Cut Pro. I'm gonna add these images to a Final Cut Pro project. I'll Command Tab over to the Finder, go to File New to open a new Finder window, and I'll navigate to the Prelude slides, and let's just bring them into the project. So I'll just move this over. I'll grab the pre Prelude slide number one here, drag it in like that, and let's drag in slide number two, drag it in like that, and I want to change the duration of these. And by the way, audio skimming is turned on right now, so I'm going to go ahead and disable that. I'll just click right here. That disables the audio skimming. So now as I move my mouse around, we don't get the audio from the project, which is basically just some piano music that you might have going on in the background as the slides are showing. So I'll position the playhead over this. I'm going to select the clip. Let's change the duration. I'll control click or right click on it. Choose change duration. Now I'm in the change duration mode. I'll type in 10, 0, 0, so 10 seconds, and then I hit return. And then I'll do the same thing here as well. A shortcut, by the way, is just to hit control D and then 10, 1, 0, and then 10 seconds and 0 frames. And so now I can just reposition these. So here we go. So I've got this slide followed by this slide 
And if I want, I can also add a transition between them. So if I select this little edit point here between them and hit Command-T on the keyboard to add the default transition, in my case, it's a cross-dissolve. And so now I can be playing this slide, and then it'll just cross-dissolve into the next one. So here we go. I'll hit the space bar to play it back. So how many times have we seen this type of video? Now, as I said, there's nothing inherently wrong with this. Of course, there's nothing wrong. But I think there's a couple big issues with it. Number one, and this is, I don't know how significant this is, but we're working with video here. And one of the advantages of video is that you can have movement. And yet at the same time, if we look at this, there's not movement. It's just sitting there as I move the skimmer back and forth. It's sitting there. I mean, we get a little movement during the transition. Now I could replace those with videos and export them as videos and that sort of thing. But this kind of still frame image is an issue. The other big issue, and this is probably more significant, is that if I want to make changes to this text now, what I would need to do is open Keynote back up make changes to the text, export a new image, bring the image right back in here again, replace the image. It's kind of a long workflow and a big hassle to make changes. So there's a lot of different alternatives we could use instead of slides, but I'll just share with you what I've been doing. And so what I'll do is I'll go up to the titles and generator sidebar here and I'll select under titles, I'll select the Izzy video category. Now, of course, Final Cut Pro comes with a lot of different titles, but by default, not very many of them have drop zones that allow you to replace them with images and video clips. And so what I've done is I've used Apple's motion to create a whole bunch of custom templates that kind of match. They all match together with different themes and that sort of thing. And then if I'm putting together this type of video, it's very easy for me just to take one and drag it into my project and use it. So it works kind of like Keynote in that I can just replace the text and replace the images. But one of the things I really like about this is that because it's video and these are animations, you can have continuous movement. So as an example, let's just grab a couple different templates from this. I'll grab this module number two. It's kind of a similar type of thing, except a dark background instead of white. I'll change the duration, control D, 10 seconds once again. 10, 0, 0. And let's drag in another one. I'll take this one, bring it in. Let's make this one 10 seconds long as well. Control click or right click, change duration, 10 seconds. So it's a similar kind of thing. We have text and placeholders for images. So let's go ahead and make some changes here. And you can see already as I skim through this that there's movement to these. And that's one of the big differences. I mean, we're working with video here, so might as well take advantage of this concept of motion graphics, do the same kind of thing where we're sharing information and presenting imagery, but instead of just having a static frame, we have movement. So let's see how the placeholders work in this one. I'm just going to position the playhead towards the end of this title here, and I'll select it. Let's find the image that we want to add. I'm going to go over to my library sidebar. Let's go into photos. What I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure this is selected, and I'm going to scroll down over here in the inspector, and I'm going to click on this drop zone well. And then once I click on that, I get into this mode where I can go through and choose an image. And I'm just going to use the exact same image, this bird image here. And then I'll click Apply Clip. So that'll put the image in there. Now, once again, it's not centered perfectly. And so I've got a couple different options here. One thing I can do is very similar to Keynote. I can just double click right here. And I get into this mode where I can click and drag and reposition it. Or I could scale it up if I want. I'll just reposition this like that. And if I want to change the text, what I can do is come over here and instead of it saying your dreams, I'll have it, thanks for joining us today. And then I'll put the presentation will begin at 10.30 a.m. And then I can do the same kind of thing I could do in Keynote. So for example, if I want to increase the size of the text here, I can scale it up like that. And this up here, if I want to scale that up, I can do that too. So that's probably a little too big, maybe something like that. All right, so now we still have the on-screen controls here. One thing you can do is just control click or right click and choose none to get out of that mode. Another thing you can do is just deselect down here in the timeline to get you out of that mode. So now let's take a look at this first one. I'll just move the playhead or the skimmer to the beginning of this and hit the space bar. So that takes advantage of the medium of video where we have movement, we have motion. This next one has placeholder text and it has three different drop zones. So if I want, I can replace all three of them. What I'll do is I'll do the same thing that I did over here for this one. And I'll use those same three images. So what I'll do is move the playhead over it towards the end like that, select the title. I'm going to scroll down in the inspector, click on a drop zone, click on an image. Let's just select this image here and I'll click on this drop zone and click on this image. 
and then I'll click on this drop zone and click on this image. And then I'll click apply clip. Once again, I can make changes directly in the viewer here. If I double click right here, I can reposition this. I can grab the corners here of the bounding box and scale it down, maybe position it like that. That looks pretty good. Double click on this one, do the same thing, scale it down, position it so it's kind of in there, uh, maybe something like this. There we go. And then same thing here. The other thing you can do is use the inspector. So for example, if I come over here and go to the drop zone three scale, I can scale it down this way. And I can also adjust the panning like that. Just drag that down. Let's scale that back up a little bit more. Maybe like that. There we go. And then once again, either control click, right click here and choose none, or I can just click away up here. Now, the other thing I did is I added my own custom transition that kind of matches with whatever the overall look is of the template. So if I want to, I can have a transition that goes from one to the other one, and it's designed to kind of match up with the style. So I'll go to the transitions browser like this, and this is the 1212 transition, the one that I'm working with right now. I'll just drag it and drop it onto there. It automatically added it to the first and to the middle point between them, and I'm just going to option click and drag to add it to the end as well. I'll close down the transitions browser. Now let's take a look at this whole thing and see what it looks like. Maybe we should do an AB comparison. So this is what it looks like in the slide version. Now, once again, keep in mind, not only is there not any animation really going on, but also if I want to change the text, I would have to open up Keynote, make the change, export a new image, bring it into here. It's kind of a big hassle. Hit the space bar and play this back. Very good. And then here's the transition. looks great but here is what i prefer to do where there's continuous motion and you can very easily edit the text directly in final cut pro i'll hit the space bar and I'll stop the playback. Now, is that a lot better? I think it is. It's a personal taste thing. I just prefer to have continuous motion or use the advantage of video's medium and have the motion. Now, once again, I made these in Apple's Motion, a great piece of software that is a perfect complement to Final Cut Pro, in my opinion. If you're comfortable with motion and you have the motion skills, you can certainly do this yourself. Or if you'd rather just have somebody else do them for you, I will be offering the ones that I made on my website shortly. Anyway, that's what I wanted to share with you today. Hopefully you found the information in this video useful. Thanks for watching. I'll talk to you again soon.